The American Heritage Dictionary provides three meanings for the word intrigue. 1. A secret or underhand scheme, a plot. 2. The practice of or involvement in such schemes, e.g., seize the throne by intrigue, and 3. A clandestine love affair. Intrigue is an appropriate word to use in discussing the Mike Bickle scandal, because someone alleged that men were executing a scheme to take Bickle's religious kingdom, while others claimed he had multiple clandestine love affairs. There have been very significant developments in the Bickle intrigue, saga, train wreck, justice campaign, or whatever you prefer to call it, in the last 48 hours. Eric Voles, the IHOP KC crisis manager, put out a video statement late Friday saying major decisions had been made about IHOP leaders. Its top leader, Stuart Greaves, resigned. Could this actually be true? Podcasters for weeks had been calling for Greaves to resign, but he had refused. He had dug in his heels and dismissed all attempts to make him leave. He was protecting the brand and ignoring the women. He received a lot of criticism but stood his ground. Even after he was exposed for lying and mishandling the situation, according to articles published on the Roy's report, he still refused to leave. More recently, Greaves announced he was stepping aside, not stepping down. He said he had stepped aside to let Eric Voles, the crisis manager, take control of the situation. He also claimed he had a clear conscience and had done his best with his management of the crisis. The departure of Greaves is a huge development for many reasons. He was the top leader at IHOP KC, and was very involved in managing the Bickle scandal behind the scenes. Essentially, Greaves was blocking a proper investigation into the allegations by the women against Bickle. The advocates for the women had been fighting to get a proper unbiased investigation. Now that he is gone, there is nobody closely tied to Bickle who can stop a genuine third-party investigation. There are other leaders on the leadership team who have not resigned yet, but David Slyker and the others did not have the influence of Stuart Greaves or his close friendship with Mike Bickle. Greaves was a Bickle loyalist and virtually a Bickle apologist. He protected Bickle like nobody else. He had been a 20-year member of IHOP and previously managed abuse crisis after abuse crisis for Bickle, according to Blaze, the podcaster who said he has received many complaints about him from former IHOP members over how he mishandled many different abuse allegations. It was obvious that Stuart Greaves was blocking an investigation to protect his friend and mentor Mike Bickle. But there was a second reason. It was reported that Greaves privately admitted that he would not approve an investigation into allegations by Bickle and or approve the release of a full report because investigators could discover other things about IHOP, which we now know would include revelations of what he knew and when he knew it, including but not limited to, all the things he had concealed for Bickle in the past 20 years. Greaves certainly knew that he needed to remain at IHOP, despite mounting public pressure, not just to protect Bickle, but also to control the situation and protect himself. So now that he is gone, you could make the educated guess there must have been a huge development to get Greaves to change his mind and finally resign. And it turns out there was. We have now learned that a disruptor has entered the picture. Someone who was never involved in the story so far. Someone who has the receipts. Someone who suddenly has a lot of power and knows it. Stephen Magnuson, former chief of staff at Bickle's personal ministry, Friends of the Bridegroom, acquired information about women abused by Bickle. We don't yet know how he got it, but as leader of a Bickle ministry, we assume he was connected to other leaders, current and former, at IHOP, who have been pressuring the founder of the organization to fully confess and repent. We also knew that there is a 50-page report prepared by these former IHOP leaders, with the details of the allegations by the women. Only the front page had been released to the public, several weeks ago, when the news story of the clergy abuse allegations first broke. What Magnuson got may be the entire report, or something else. In any case, it appears he has the facts, and he knows they are accurate. In recent days, he decided to do something with his information. He turned up the heat on Bickle. They had a phone conversation nearly an hour long during which Magnuson told Bickle his apology was not acceptable. 
He told Bickle he would have to be more forthcoming or the details of the abuse allegations he knew would become public. Since that confrontation, Greaves has left and IHOP has permanently banned Bickle. In his statement, Eric Voles said they had based their decision to cut all ties to Bickle immediately and permanently based on new allegations against Bickle they had received. Clearly he was referring to the information Magnuson had acquired. Magnuson got their attention very quickly. IHOP knew they had lost control of the narrative. They also knew that if they didn't act quickly, the public backlash would be even more severe. The public would conclude IHOP knew how bad the allegations were, but still did not act. It's now all about optics. Now IHOP can say, as soon as we found out the serious allegations, we cut all ties with Mike Bickle immediately and permanently. The decision by Greaves to resign, viewed in light of the disruptor, appears entirely based on the fact that IHOP decided to cut ties with Bickle. He had stayed to protect Bickle, but now that Bickle was cut, he no longer needed to stay. The other reason most likely is Greaves would have had to publicly announce to the IHOP community that Bickle had been banned. He was not comfortable doing this because Mike was his friend, and it would look as if he had canned Bickle, or personally betrayed him. Lots of people at IHOP still love Mike Bickle, and he would never hear the end of it for the rest of his life. IHOP KC held out as long as they could to protect Bickle but then they finally pulled the plug. They were dragged kicking and screaming all the way there, and we should never forget that. They did not do the right thing until they felt extreme pressure. It will be interesting to see if Bickle responds to the threats by the disruptor. On the one hand, he may think he has to get ahead of the story, because he loves to control the narrative of his life, but on the other hand, it would be so difficult for him to humble himself and take the initiative, destroying what's left of his reputation. How does a man who was once one of the most respected Christian leaders in the world, make a full confession of all his horrible sins publicly? Mike Bickle taught on revival for many years and the most often quoted revival scripture is 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Will he humble himself fully to experience a true personal revival? If he does, it could be the spark that ignites what he has wanted for twenty years, a revival at IHOP.